I what? Zoot zoos? ZZs? Fringes? I couldn't understand. I said, how is this going to make me a better person? I think I'm all right. I don't need to wear. And I didn't wear. And then I started wearing two of them. You remember? Then I found out, I said, well, the scriptures say four, so I start wearing four. And I never knew why y'all wanted us to wear fringes till one day I went on a date. Not that it was the first date, no. It just, it just happened I went on a date. And some bad thoughts came in my mind. And I looked at them fringes. And I seen with them fridges that popped out what they represented and what they, why y'all wanted me to wear them and look at them. And the evil thoughts, well, I might have let this woman seduce me, I walked away. She didn't have a way. Because I walked away. The Lord guided me away. Because when I look in the fringes, I seen the fringes. And I was able to say, nope. And keep walking. So it's a reason. We don't understand everything. The scriptures, most I said, your ways are not my ways. And your thoughts are not my thoughts. And as heaven is higher than the earth, but no, so is my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I couldn't understand years ago why Yahweh would let a man have a spirit of jealousy and take the woman to the priest till I began to counsel a lot of men and counsel a lot of divorce cases and see the rages of jealousy then it occurred to me just like if some of y'all can't see why y'all said if a man's wife is trying to protect him and grab another man by the private hire, the creator said a woman's hand should be cut off. Now how many can understand that raise your hand? Oh, you do? Now how many don't understand it, raise your hand? Okay. Well, get up there, Laura. I just want to, well, now we ain't going to stop our teaching, but you don't have to get up there. You don't. You just threw your hands up because you didn't understand what I said. <laughs> Could you repeat it again, I said my question was, how many don't agree with the fact when Yahweh said in the law that when a man, two men are struggling together and his wife drove near to deliver him and take her hand and grab another man's private. Yah said her hand should be cut off and thy eyes should not pity her. I said, how many don't understand that? And y'all were honest, you don't have to understand everything because uh, as we grow, as we develop, as we learn to love Yah and trust in him with all our heart, all our soul and all our might, we will begin to understand why he said things. But when you're in your infancy state, just coming in and only been here for a few years, or when you are just getting out of your rebellious state, even though you've been here many years, there's things you just don't understand. Some of y'all were infants and don't understand. Some of y'all just don't write rebellious and just don't want to understand because it don't seem right. But nevertheless, let's keep reading. Exodus 33, verse 20. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And Yahweh said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand, while I pass by, and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, 
but my face shall not be seen. All right? So, Yah took him out on the rock and covered his face and then moved his face and Moses, after he moved his hand, Moses could see his back part, but he couldn't see his face because his glory generated from his face. But merely by him being in the presence of Yah, when Yah's glory was proceeding from his face, from then forth he had to wear a veil on his face. Because when it went amongst the children of Israel, they ran from him and they were afraid of him because he was glowing. Well, he was glowing because he had been in the presence of Yahweh's glory. And the Creator said, in the last days, the earth should be lit up with his glory. So you know what kind of glory that is. But some people have assumed that when he said, no man can see my face and live, they took it out of context. They didn't realize it was on the context of uh, my glory is coming out of my face and you want to see my face and nobody can see my face and live because at that time, my glory is proceeding out of my face. My glory will burn you up. It will consume you. And they ignore the fact that the 11th verse, Yah said, and Moses spoke unto Yahweh face to face as a man speaking unto his friend. They want to ignore many, many of those scriptures. <coughs> but nevertheless, let's go right to the book of Ezra. Because we're going to see what Yahweh said about integration. Let's go to Ezra. Let's start reading. Let's go to the ninth chapter. Now hold that page and now go to Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. Now look what y'all said. This is the book of the law. And here's what the law says. Start reading the first four verses of the seventh chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. When Yahweh thy Elohim shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it. When I bring you into the promised land. And have cast out many nations before thee. And I, I take all the other nations out because they don't belong there. This is your inheritance. This is what I'm giving you and your family and all the other families that are there. I don't want them to stay there so they can marry you and integrate with you. All the other families that are there, they got to vacate. They got to go out because this is your inheritance. This is the inheritance that I promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants. The Hittites, the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when Yahweh thy Elohim shall deliver them before thee. When I deliver these nations before you, thou shalt smite them. I want you to smite these nations. And utterly destroy them. And don't play around. I want you to make a complete end of them. It's for a reason. I know you don't understand it, but I want you to utterly destroy them. Don't leave any of them. Because I, I know they seem nice, but don't leave any of them. And these were black people he was talking about. These were other black nations. And he said, read that again. And when Yahweh thy Elohim shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. Don't make no agreements with them. Don't make no pacts with them. Don't make no oath with them. Don't make no covenants with them. Don't make no marriages with them because I don't want you to make any kind of covenant with them. Nor show mercy unto them. And I don't want you to show mercy because they got to be eliminated. Neither shall.